Hi guys, welcome back to The Barren Grounds by David A. Robertson. We're on chapter seven. This is part three of chapter seven. So we have Eli has joined Morgan up in the secret room in the attic that Morgan opened up. Uh, and he drew a picture and is showing it to Morgan. And on it, he has a picture of a creature uh, an animal but walking upright like a human and Morgan has asked him what kind of animal that is and he says it's a fisher and uh, he says on page 62 we'll just read from 62 here where it says that's a fisher on okay that's a fisher he said you saw them where you live she corrected herself lived Maybe she shouldn't have. He slumped. Yeah, I saw them out in the bush when I was hunting with... With? Never mind. I saw them. Did this come from a story you know? No, he said. I just kept drawing it. I didn't know what I was drawing. I had this picture in my head all day. Morgan held the drawing closer to her face. I think... I did too, she said absently, not really to Eli. You did? He asked. Well, I was walking instead of the fisher, but still, she said, weird. The creature's black eyes were watching her, and it was creepy. It was like when you know somebody is staring at you. Goose pimples rose on her arms. She moved the drawing pad from side to side, up and down, but the fisher wouldn't take its eyes off her. She remembered how Mrs. Bignell had shown them that the Mona Lisa doesn't stop looking at you, no matter where you are in the room. She taped up a poster of the painting and had the kids move from corner to corner and all around the room. She was right. This fisher was the animal version of the Mona Lisa. The odd thing about it was that she didn't quite want it to look away. We should put it up on the wall, she said. I didn't literally mean that it was for this room, Eli looked around at the place Morgan had discovered, unimpressed. Morgan stood up and started pacing around the small room. If Katie and James know that I'm up here, even if they're not going to kick us out, we need a new, even more secret place. And this is it. This is our new secret place? He repeated, imagine the possibilities. For the first time all day, she felt excited. We'll bring some comforters up here, pillows. I'll bring some books. You bring pencils and stuff, I guess. Oh, we could get those lights that strap to our heads. While Morgan paced around the room, she saw Eli watching her and it looked to her as though he was, as instructed, trying to imagine the possibilities. Really, she wasn't asking much. Blankets and pillows, imagining that couldn't have been difficult. Okay, he said, sure. Yes, Morgan jumped and clapped her hands. Now, first things first, can I take this drawing out of the pad? Eli nodded, thanks. Morgan pulled the drawing out carefully, then looked around for the perfect place. She pressed it against each of the walls, sliding it around on every imaginable spot, but settled on the slanting wall, the roof of the house. She positioned it so that it was centered exactly between the roof and the floor, wall to wall. Can you hold it just like this? Eli stood up and held the drawing in place. Good, great. Morgan placed her phone back against the opposite wall, slanting it upward so light showered over the illustration. Hold it there. She ran across the attic, dug into the tool bag again, and found a staple gun she'd seen earlier when retrieving the box cutter. Moments later, she was back in their secret place. She positioned the staple gun over the top right corner of the paper, squeezed it, and thwack! A staple shot into the wood, affixing the paper to the wall. Okay, so Morgan has a staple gun and she's stapling 
this poster, this picture that Eli has drawn into the wall. A gust of air blew out of the paper, much stronger than before. Morgan's entire head of hair blew backwards as if a hairdryer had been turned on to maximum power. But as quickly as the gust came, it was gone. Whoa, Morgan said. That came from the paper, Eli stated. It totally did. They stared at the picture, then at each other. Eli nodded at Morgan, giving her permission to add another staple. Another gust of wind, this one stronger still. And it was cold wind. It stung Morgan's cheeks, already raw from crying. This can't be happening, she said. And why now? Why not when I was drawing downstairs, he asked. Good question. Maybe, okay, don't think this is cheesy, but maybe we have to be together? But why? I don't know. Morgan threw her hand in the air. I'm trying to think like this is a fantasy book. Maybe we have to be in the attic. It's kind of a, it's kind of sweeter if it's us, not a room, just saying. Sorry, just kidding. I'm not, I'm trying not to freak out. These things don't happen in real life. Oh, Morgan pressed the staple gun against another corner of the drawing. Should I? Yeah, thwack, an avalanche of freezing air burst through the paper and pushed both of them back almost to the opposite wall. And then it was gone. Morgan's hair was crazy, like she'd just woken up or stuck her finger in an electrical socket. Even Eli's hair, usually perfectly braided, slick and beautiful, had strands blown out of place. The attic was cold. The wind had come out like a lightning bolt, abruptly stopping each time, and it left behind a lingering chill. There was one corner left to staple. Morgan placed the staple gun against the last corner. Ready? she asked. Ready, he said. Thwack! The blizzard in the drawing, one just pencil, once just pencil lines, stormed into the attic room. The kids stumbled backwards against the wall. Morgan tried to move to the side, out of the way of the wind, but there was no escaping it. And this time it was unrelenting. It wasn't just wind either. Snow was pouring into the room, so fast and hard that it stung against Morgan's skin. She raised her arm in front of her face to shield it from the onslaught. Eli did the same. Within seconds, the floor was covered in white flakes. Morgan peeked over her arm to look at the paper fastened to the wall. It had been a drawing, but not anymore. Now, it was a window. But the window didn't open to the world outside the house. It opened to the world that Eli had created, the world that Morgan had pictured that morning. She could see the blizzard, both in the attic and in the picture. She could see the near endless field of snow. She could, she could see, just barely, the tree line far in the distance. She could see shimmering lights, like tiny stars, from the village. She could see the fisher. The animal being was walking towards them. At first slowly, then it broke into a run. Snow kicked up behind it. Morgan screamed. Eli rushed forward, ripped the paper away from the wood, and the other world was gone. It's Ice cold, Eli said, dropping it. It floated to the ground like a snowflake. Morgan and Eli stood there, staring at each other for a long while, until Morgan whispered, pick up the drawing. It was on the floor, and the melting snow was beginning to dampen the paper. I just let it go. Why do I have to do it, he asked. It's your drawing, she said. Plus, I'm older. 
Eli kicked at the drawing first. A few snowflakes coughed out of it, but nothing more. He bent over, tapped at it a few times, then picked it up. He turned it over slowly to reveal that the picture was exactly as he had drawn it. The snow, the trees, the village. Only now, the fissure seemed closer than he had before and stuck in mid-run, coming right at them. Okay, so they're stapling this picture Eli had drawn of the fissure in this snowy uh, landscape with a village behind him. They're stapling it up to the wall and all of a sudden it's like this portal opens and the picture itself is a whole different place, a whole other realm or universe or place, I don't know. And maybe another dimension. And in the picture they can see what Eli has drawn and they see the fissure, but the fissure who is standing upright like a human also sees them and is coming towards them and the blowing climate, the blowing environment that they're in, the snow, it's all blowing around, it's freezing cold and it's blowing at the kids. The kids are being blown back in the attic and there's snow on the ground and the wind is blowing, their hair is whipping around and Eli runs to the picture and he rips it down off the wall he panics and rips it down and when they finally re-pick up the picture to look at it in amongst the snow that's all over the floor in the attic the picture is exactly the same except for the fisher who is closer to them now and heading towards them in mid-run somehow this picture came to life Somehow this picture opened a portal. They don't know. They don't know if it's because they have to be together for the picture to have this life to open up. Maybe they have to be in the attic. Who knows? But that's the end of chapter seven. I am loving this book. Next video will be chapter eight. All right, guys, take care. See you later.